Hi, welcome to Sunil Maths Tutorial Functional Analysis Class Number 59. In this video, we learn two, one definition and two theorems. First, learn the definition unitary operator. Let us see the definition unitary operator. Let capital H be a Hilbert space and U is an operator defined on capital H. H is a Hilbert space and U is an operator defined on capital H. Then this U is called then this U is called unitary operator U is called unitary operator if it satisfies the condition U u star is equals to u star u is equals to i where capital i is identity operator where capital i is identity operator so an operator u is called unitary operator if it satisfies this condition u u star is equals to u star u is equals to capital i any operator then t t star is equals to t star t is equals to he is known as normal operator the same is equivalent to i is known as unitary operator that is the difference between normal operator and unitary operator so from this definition you observe the point that you observe this every unitary operator every unitary operator is normal every unitary operator is normal and the second point is u star is inverse of u u star is inverse of u it means adjoint of an operator is nothing but the inverse of the operator adjoint of an operator is nothing but the inverse of the operator inverse exists means the operator u the operator u is non singular operator is non singular operator so from the definition of unitary operator you remember these points an operator u is called unitary operator if it satisfies this condition u u star is equals to u star u is equals to capital i where capital i is the where capital i is the where capital i is the identity operator and every unitary operator is normal because it satisfies the normal property also an operator u is called normal means u u star is equals to u star u so every unitary operator is normal operator and we said that u u star is equals to i you, the product of these two is equivalent to identity operator means one is inverse to the other it means u star is nothing but u inverse u star is nothing but u inverse that is u star is inverse of the operator u and inverse exists means the operator must be non singular operator these are the this is the definition of unitary operators and the properties of unitary operator from this definition we prove the following theorem let us see the statement if capital t is an operator defined on capital h then the following conditions are equivalent to one another t star t is equals to i normal operator inner product of tx comma tx is equals to inner product of tx comma this is not x this is y inner product of tx comma ty is equals to inner product of x comma y for all x comma y belongs to h norm tx is equals to norm x for all x belongs to capital h Yes, let us prove this statement let capital h be a hilbert space and capital t be any operator capital t be any operator defined defined on the hilbert space capital h our aim is to show that the above three conditions these three conditions are equivalent to one another so first we prove that one implies two 
1 implies 2. Suppose, suppose t star t is equals to capital I. t star t is equals to capital I. We assume condition number 1. We are going to prove condition number 2. In the condition number 2, we have inner product of tx, ty. It can be written as inner product of t star tx, y. Because we transform, we transform this t into this place. So, you get here t star. So, which is equivalent to, because of t star t is equals to y, inner product of ix, y. And everybody knows that ix is equals to x because i is identity operator inner product of x, y. Therefore, we conclude that inner product of tx, ty is equals to inner product of x, y for all x, y belongs to capital H. This proves to this proves condition number 2. That's it. Next, in the next step, we prove 2 implies 3. 2 implies 3. So, to prove this 2 implies 3, assume num condition number 2. Suppose, suppose inner product of tx, ty is equals to inner product of x, y for all x, y belongs to capital H. So, right. Now, replace, now replace, now replace y by x. Now, replace y by x. Inner product of tx, tx is equals to inner product of x, x. This is nothing but norm tx square is equals to norm x square. This is nothing but norm tx is equals to norm x after removing square on both sides for all x belongs to capital H. This proves condition number 3. This proves condition number 3. Next we are going to prove 3 implies 1. 3 implies 1. So, assume condition number 3. Suppose, suppose norm tx is equals to norm tx is equals to norm x for all x belongs to capital H. So, this condition implies as this condition implies as norm tx whole square is equals to norm x square norm x square. This condition implies as inner product of tx, tx is equals to inner product of x, x for all x belongs to capital H. Again, this condition can be replaced like this. Replaced like this. Inner product of tx, tx is equals to inner product of ix, x because ix is equals to x. So, right. Now, replace this t to this side. So, obviously, you get inner product of t star tx, comma x is equals to inner product of ix, comma x. Again, it can be written as inner product of t star tx, comma x minus inner product of ix, comma x is equals to 0. This condition can be written as inner product of t star tx, minus ix comma x is equals to 0 again it can be written as inner product of t star t t star t inner product of t star t minus capital i identity operator into x comma x is equals to 0 this condition implies as t star t minus i into x is equals to 0 where x not equals to 0 so t star t minus i is equals to 0. So, which implies t star t is equals to capital I. This condition shows us t is unitary. t is unitary operator. This proves condition 1. This proves condition number 1. So, we prove that this in this way. First, we show that 1 implies 2 and then we show that 2 implies 3. And then we show that 3 implies 1. So, it means all the 3 conditions in the statement are equivalent to one another. T star T is equals to, T star T is equals to capital I. Inner product of Tx, Ty is equals to inner product of X, Y. For all X, Y belongs to H. Norm Tx is equals to norm X. 
for all x belongs to capital H. So let us prove one more theorem in the same video. Let us see the statement. Let capital T be an operator defined on H. If T is unitary, implies and implied by, then it is an isometric isomorphism of capital H onto itself. So let us prove this theorem. Let capital H be a Hilbert space and capital T be an operator, capital T be an operator on capital H. We have to prove that, we have to prove that capital T is unitary, capital T is unitary operator capital T is unitary operator implies and implied by implies and implied by capital T is an isometric an isometric isomorphism an isometric isomorphism of capital H on to on to itself this is our statement so let us see capital H be a Hilbert space and T be an operator and T be an operator T be an operator we have to prove that T is unitary operator defined on H implies and implied by T is an isometric isomorphism of H into H on to itself so let us say, take the first part. Suppose T is unitary operator. Suppose capital T is unitary operator. By the definition of unitary operator, T T star is equals to T star T is equals to I where capital I is identity operator. Where capital I is identity operator. So this condition implies as by the definition of unitary operator we conclude that T is invertible. T is invertible. T is invertible means T is a bijection. So T is a bijection means T is both 1 1 and on 2. T is both 1 1 and on 2. So remember that point T is both 1 1 and on 2. Now we use this point T T star is equals to I. T T star is equals to I. Since, since T T star is equals to I. By previous theorem, by three equivalent conditions, we get norm T X is equals to norm X for all X belongs to capital H. Which, con this condition implies as T preserves, T preserves the norms T preserves the norms defined on capital H. If T preserves the norms on capital H and T is both 1, 1 and on 2, therefore, obviously, we conclude that capital T is an isometric, an isometric isomorphism, an isometric isomorphism of capital H on to itself on capital H onto itself. I repeat this part again. Please observe that. Suppose that T is unitary. By definition of unitary operator, T T star is equals to T star T is equals to I where I is identity. Where I is identity, we know that every unitary operator is invertible. Every invertible means, uh, every op uh, an operator invertible means it is both 1, 1 and on 2 because of bijection. Since again T T star is equals to I implies as norm T X is equals to norm X. It means T preserves the norms. T preserves the norms it, and it is both 1 1 and on 2. It means T is an isometric isomorphism of capital H on to itself. Now we are going to prove the converse part. Now we are going to prove the converse part. In the converse part we assume the isometric isomorphism and prove that T is an unitary operator suppose suppose capital T is an isometric isomorphism 
an isometric isomorphism of capital H onto itself. So it is an isometric isomorphism onto capital H means T is both 1, 1 and on 2. T is both 1, 1 and on 2. If it is both 1, 1 and on 2, then T is invertible. This is important point. Then T is invertible. T is invertible means T inverse exists. T inverse exists. Again since, again since, capital T is an isometric, an isometric isomorphism. An isometric isomorphism. Every isometric isomorphism preserves the norms. It means T preserves T preserves the norms. T preserves the norms. T preserves the norms means norm Tx is equals to norm X for all X belongs to capital H. T preserves the norms. So T norm Tx is equals to norm X for all X belongs to capital H. By using equivalent conditions, we conclude that T star T is equals to I. T star T is equals to I. Operate on both the sides operate on both the sides with t inverse t star t into t inverse is equals to i into t inverse which implies by using associative axiom t star t t inverse is equals to i into t inverse means t inverse again which implies as this t t inverse becomes i t star into i is equals to t inverse which implies which implies T star is equals to T inverse. Now you conclude that T into T star is equals to T into T star means T inverse which is equals to I. In a similar manner, in a similar manner, T star T is equals to T inverse T which is equals to I. From these two conditions we conclude that from these two conditions we conclude that T T star is equals to T star T is equals to capital I. This condition is nothing but unitary definition. Therefore, capital T is unitary operator. Capital T is unitary operator. This completes the proof of our theorem. Hence, proved. So, an operator T is unitary operator. An operator T is unitary operator. Then we conclude that. Then we conclude that. Capital T is an isometric isomorphism of the Hilbert space capital H into itself important property and these three conditions equivalent conditions are also important to learn keep learning in the next video we learn projections on hilbert space that's it